Oh, hello. Welcome along to the session. My name's Chris Jarvis. And before we start, we'd like to say a big thank you to our sponsor for this session, Ardman. And in case you've been asleep for 100 years, Ardman is an independent and multi-award winning studio producing fabulous feature films, TV series, advertising games and interactive entertainment. The studio's work includes the creation of the much loved comedy duo Wallace and Gromit, Shaun the Sheep and of course more. Ardman say they are proud to sponsor the CMC. Well, we are proud too. We're also very, very proud to be associated with the Pauline Quirk Academy and their one minute film competition, the PQA TV one minute film. Currently, there are 15 finalists. Their films are just one minute long, of course, on the theme right here, right now. Please cast your eye on those films and then cast your vote. It's all on the PQA TV website. Let's take a look at one now. Here's what the Nairn climate strikers wanted to say. I feel like this is important because it's something that we're all going to have to face in our lifetime and it's, it's something that is so easily ignored. We can change what we're doing. No one from our town or where we came from really knew anything about it and we both just thought it was really interesting and we found out more and more and we just thought well we had to do something. I think we all just have to stop waiting and relying on people and we have to do something ourselves. I think lots of people don't get involved or don't care or really show an interest in climate change because they just think, oh yeah, someone else will fix it. Oh yeah, Greta Thunberg, she'll fix it. But it's not something that one person can do by themselves and everyone needs to take part. And it's really something that we all have to come together for and do as humanity. Please check out those inspiring films and give your professional opinion by voting. Well, let's get started. You can submit questions for this session at any time using the heart icon on the top right of the screen. You can include your name and organisation or be anonymous. The contributors to this session are Brenda Bisner, who is mom and also chief content officer for Kadoodle. Mickey, oh there she is, Hoynatska, hello everybody, um, Chief Content and Creative Officer at uh, Hopster, Estelle Lloyd, hello to you, Co-Founder and Koo at Azumi, and also Lucy Murphy, Director of Kids Content for the UK and Republic of Ireland at Sky. Well first up, let's have a nice close-up of Brenda please, Brenda Bisner, oh. Brenda please tell everyone what exactly is your role at Cadoodle and hello by the way. Hello, it's so nice to see everybody wherever you are in the world. Uh, my name is Brenda Bisner and I am the Chief Content Officer for Kadoodle TV. Uh, we are a safe streaming channel for children under 12 in over 195 countries now. Um, I have a quick demo reel uh, or cinematic adventure, I'd like to call it, that uh, we can play if you don't mind. Kadoodle TV is a family-centric safe streaming service for kids. With over 20,000 episodes of the world's favorite kids entertainment and educational shows, Kadoodle TV offers something every family wants, handpicked by caring people, safe and free. Stream Kadoodle TV on your device of choice. Download the app and start watching for free today. Join our family and find peace of mind knowing your kids are safe streaming. Well, thank you so much for showing that. Uh, I'll dive right in. We're an AVOD channel, and I realize this is an SVOD commissioner panel, but um, you know, it, it makes sense to start with that conversation because of what we're doing in the space. Uh, we've been around since 2012, and we're a tech company. And what we've built is a safe streaming channel for kids with a primary point of entry with connected TVs, and we're reaching over 195 countries. Uh, we have removed the barrier to entry so that we can target no matter where someone is in the world, no matter what their income level is, and uh, you know, give them access to content in a safe streaming environment. 
Um, safe streaming, we own those words, and we take safety for kids to the highest level. We're COPA, GDPRK, CARU compliant, and everything, as that video said, is watched by real people. Um, we are um, a large team now during this period of uh, crisis. We've hired quite a few. Um, we're, we're very, very uh, active in that uh, hiring space at the moment. And what we're um, enabling uh, our company to do is really have a hands-on approach. So we're able to assist brand owners in such a larger way. And the best way to understand us is that we're a safe alternative to YouTube. So, you know, knowing that over 360,000 kids are born every day, fun fact, <laughs> we're trying to provide a safe streaming experience for kids and families. And I don't know about how many of you uh, are working parents at home with kids, but to have a trusted place to put your child right now that is free and you don't have to worry is such a luxury. And Connected TVs being our primary point of entry, we've always believed in family viewing. And now that is very much the case uh, of the world that we're living in. Uh, safe streaming, we've talked about this. It's what we know. I, I always use the analogy, when you cross the street, you hold your child's hand. That is exactly what we're doing as a company. Um, so it's, it's very important to us. And the reason why we're doing it is because of the research we do to back up um, our business, which is, you know, 95% of parents agree they want better options for managing their kids' uh, content viewing. 45% uh, know that they, you know, that their kids have streamed a video that they didn't approve of on YouTube. Um, not going to bash YouTube, it's a wonderful site and a lot of great brands have been born out of it. Uh, but, you know, everything there is Googleable, and I think we all pretty much know that there is a little bit of danger that exists when you're in an open platform. Uh, which is the difference between us is that we are a closed platform. Um, you know, again, being the safe place that we are, um, we are, you know, harnessing great content from all around the world. Ardman, our sponsors on our channel, thank you. <laughs> We're very family focused. We care about families. We're listening to families. Um, everything we do is for a family. You know, we're serving kids under 12 in 195 countries. And, you know, for that reason, there's a lot of different needs to serve and a lot of different families to serve. Um, and, you know, being a trusted entertainment ecosystem for not just producers, but families is something that we really pride ourselves on. Um, our point of access, again, is connected TVs. If you have a web-based browser TV that is fairly recent, you can go there and download the Kadoodle TV app for free. Um, we do do our own ad sales internally. And again, everything is, you know, adhering to the highest letter of the law and everything is watched by human first. And we are very cognizant of our user experience within the ad breaks that we do serve. Um, and if you want to remove ads altogether because you feel strongly that they're not appropriate for children, we do have an SVOD option. It is uh, less than 5% of our business because we're finding that most people don't want to pay for yet another streaming service. Um, some content that we have, you know, we have over 21,000 episodes of content. You know, I oversee that division and we're closing anywhere between, between 10 to 12 content deals a week right now. Um, ever since March, we have done a lot as an organization to step up to the plate for families. We launched an initiative uh, called Helping Hands, which initially started out as, you know, how to help your kids understand washing their hands and covering their mouth and what's going on in the world. And then it really turned into, you know, how not to raise a racist, right? Because we're facing a lot of different things in the world at the moment that are very important. So a lot of our content partners have stepped up with PSAs and we're just continuing to collect the biggest brands in the world like Paw Patrol uh, down to some of the biggest YouTubers that exist in the world. Uh, so we can offer anything that you might go see on YouTube or on a broadcaster or Netflix on our safe streaming ecosystem. Uh, again, this was done a few days ago, but we've just closed another deal. So we're in 195 countries. You know, it's a fast paced business. I will say I, I always tell my team it's a moment business, not a minute business. And given uh, what's happened in the world with COVID, you know, we've really increased um our output as humans, as output as company, and our usage is up over 160 uh, percent. So we're seeing quite a surge at this time, and uh, we're really resonating around the world. Well, Brenda, it's great that you've been hiring during the pandemic and reacting to it. <laughs> How is it likely to affect your commissioning? 
Well, right now, like I said, we're active about 10 to 12 deals per week. Hi, this is Taco. <laughs> mm. I was going to say, so um, programs you know, about cute dogs will do well. Oh, yes. The puppies will save us. I say it all the time. In <laughs> fact, Paw Patrol is doing very well on the channel. Um, listen, you know, as far as commissioning, I'm looking to serve a lot of different needs of kids. Um, you know, for content needs, I always go for the completed stuff first. Anything under a half an hour has great retention. The bigger the brand, the better it will do. You know, we work on a business model that's very similar to YouTube in the sense that we pay a CPM rate. Uh, but we're not changing that arbitrarily and we're paying it even if we don't have an advert to serve. Um, and advertising is an entirely different business to talk about at this moment, but uh, I'll just leave that there. Sure. Can you explain any more about your acquisition strategy, Brenda? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it really comes down to the awareness of the brand, right? So we're able to look at YouTube in a very transparent way and see what's working there, right? For some of these big brands, Booba is a great example of this uh, fantastic show. Uh, does very well on our channel. So there's the harnessing of gamers, uh, great brands that are born out of YouTube, putting them on the safe ecosystem, which is essentially a new revenue stream for them. Then there's also looking at the big brands like Paw Patrols that exist in the world and, you know, taking that content and also having it on Kadoodle, which just gives another point of entry and again, a large revenue stream. Um, as an organization, as a tech company, we are, you know, very well funded and we do a lot of, uh, you know, work with our partners, no matter what they are, you know, where they are, what they're doing uh, from a social media perspective to marketing dollars that we do allocate to um, advertise our service on connected TVs. Have you got any plans for Kadoodle to increase interactivity on your content platforms at all? That's a question from Nikki Stimmel. Interact. Oh, no, that's a great question. Interactivity, no. We are a safe streaming platform. So, you know, just to back that up even, even more, when a content provider delivers, we do all the heavy lifting, which includes a very okay. thorough QA process that fits into our safe streaming standards. You won't he see any hitting, killing, stupid, ugly, loser kind of stuff on our channel. It just will not exist. Um, sure. And uh, as far as interactivity, that would be very complicated for what we're doing in terms of having our closed platform that is safe and you know really proving that it's safe and then promising that it's safe. Philippa Giles from Bandit Cornwall Television asks would you ever do anything for the over 12s? Would you ever expand Oh possibly. That I mean you know kids 12 and under is a very broad demo right at 12 they're you know yeah. definitely doing something different <laughs> let's be honest um, kids are growing up very quickly now. Um, but absolutely, you know, again, we believe in family viewing. I think the conversation is certainly on the table of how we can continue to address what our families need around the globe. And that comes from heavy research that we invest very, um, you know, significant amounts of money into because, you know, the data is very important to us. Mm -hmm. Martin Wright um, asks, what is your estimated audience reach? I think you mentioned 140 countries. Is that right? But do you yeah, know technically it's people? 195. Hundreds right. of millions of connected TV devices and families. Uh, we do know that um, we're reaching a lot of people. We hear our, our parents are actually very active with us. And the reach that we have globally and our scale is something that, you know, we don't have a competitor in what we're doing um, from that regard. And we're not YouTube. We're not trying to be YouTube. We're simply providing a safe alternative to anything else out there in the AVOD space. Brilliant. A question from Nessa and Little Moon. Do you ever come in at the pre-production stage to help develop additional content like games? Uh, no, that it would be the simple answer to that. I will be announcing our first Kadoodle original uh, in the coming uh, weeks, maybe in a month. Um, something that we looked at um, harnessing what talent was working retention wise and what we could do to further elevate that brand. But for the from that is that is just one original that we're focusing on now. For all intents and purposes, it's all completed content. I don't do any pre buys. I don't come in as a commissioner. It's not something that we're interested in doing because that to us is a very uh, different business model, and we're looking to change the way content is made and the way that content is viewed. Right. Well, I think you've answered this then from Emma from Tiny House Productions. Will you commission original content? Uh, that commission conversation is, is just been addressed, but even how we're doing that is very different. It has not been done yeah. before like this. No. And the best thing I can say is just watch the space because what, okay. you know, the goal is, is to change the way it's all getting done. 
let's squeeze in one more and this is from alex um do you accept completed projects made by kids yes absolutely i actually just acquired a few it's nice to know how they're being managed because of child labor laws so it's very important to understand the protections that the child has you know when we're looking at certain um youtubers you know if a, a parent is blatantly pimping their child out for financial gain it's something we really stay away from <laughs> Sure. But if it's Brenda, a child thank that, you very, you know, very much for your protection. time. And we can ask more questions. If you've got any, we, 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 we're, we're rather pushed for time. But thank you so much, Brenda, from Kadoodle. Remember, viewers, you can pose and post questions in the post session forum. So just stay on vMix because it all happens here. It's called back chat. And I'll tell you more about that later. But carry on asking questions for our guests as we come to them. On to our next one. Um, next in our celebrity squares, uh, Mickey Hoynatska. Please tell everybody what is, hello, hello, Mickey. What hello, is your hello. role at Hopster, please? Hello, um, and uh, very, very well done for pronouncing my last name correctly. I've heard many versions of it, and normally <laughs> they are not the ones that are um, uh, the ones that should be. Anyway, Hopster, uh, I am a chief content and creative officer, so I take care of all our content strategy, creative design, games, and original content. And Hopster is a BAFTA nominated preschool learning channel up in as VOD service. So we offer kids TV shows, we offer songs, games and music all based around our um, original curriculum, which is the learning discovery framework. We are also, of course, safe, but we are art free. Um, we and what we really we're very proud of we are very diverse and inclusive um, because we want to um, kickstart the love of learning in children and expose them to the real wider world. Um, as Hopster Studios, we produce original content. We commission content as well. And the content we always look for is short form. It should be smart, it should be fun, and it should be brave, and it should teach the kids something. And I have a little reel we can watch. Hopster. Hopster helps kids learn through the stories they love. Bringing together the best British family favourites. Beautiful independent animations from around the world. Hey, Crocodile! Original productions from Hopster Studios. Isn't teamwork wonderful? Mango, Songs and nursery rhymes. And children's books. Nighty night, sweetheart. Julian loves mermaids. And fun learning games. Well done! All this in a safe and ad-free environment that promotes diversity and inclusivity. <laughs> Hopster, everybody's happy. Looking good there. <laughs> Thank you, Mickey. So um, I've got a question that's just come straight in from Bella Tomlinson, actually. And I think, once again, I think you kind of hinted at this, but it might reinforce the message. They're creating a series for the 7 to 11 age range and aiming for a five-minute episode length. Is that a suitable duration for an SFOD? The duration is great, but we are a preschool brand. So oh, we yeah. are, our content is for the yeah. two to six year olds um but yes take out for... the long words take out the long words bella <laughs> yes exactly um uh, but it is the, the duration it's for an svod platform or an app the duration is really can be flexible because we don't have right. to fit into a linear tv schedule so we have right. content that is one minute two minutes three and a half minutes and seven minutes so uh, we are very flexible with the duration of episodes Wow. Now I've got to ask, how has the pandemic affected your channel strategy, both in terms of what you're putting out and also how you're getting it? Uh, we were very busy during the pandemic because, as you can imagine, a lot of families who were stuck at home with children who are not going to preschool. So um, mm. we actually um, had really, I mean, I don't know if it's like a good thing or a bad thing, but of course it has been quite good for us because our um, 
viewership really grew, but also we were very quick to produce some original content to address the questions that children have. So, for example, a song about how far is two meters, because for a preschooler, it doesn't mean anything. So we tried to explain mm -hmm. it as, you know, 25 bucks, for example, or a door or a cheetah. So we produce a lot of the little um, songs and videos about how you should properly wash your hands why you shouldn't touch your face and things like that. So we were very quick with responding and sharing with, with the Hopster families. And that was quite appreciated because the kids needed to know what's happening and what to do. So in a quite a fun way, we explained what it is and how to protect themselves from it. Mickey, what else has worked well on your channels over the past 12 months, not just the pandemic? Um, so we have a really quite wide uh, variety of content. Um, but in, ter in terms of what works really well is short form, it's fun, and it's music. So a lot of songs that we created or we show, shows that, for example, shows like Kids Who Save the World, which is our original show about kids who really do something uh, for the planet. Uh, other shows are things like Two Minute Tales, which is a modern twist on old fables and things like that. So we see quite a lot of variety of what um, the kids are watching. And games, of course, are super popular as well. Yeah. And are there any gaps in, in, in what you've got at the moment? Is there something you're really after that you're not getting at the yeah. moment? So we wanted to celebrate the Black History Month uh, this year and we realized there's not enough content really. And if there is content, it's mostly quite like old history and US history. So what we are missing and what we are looking for right now is content, um, could be songs, could be episodes about the black history, especially the British one. So Windrush Generation and also current role models. So we would like to have current role models that are not coming from the urban sort of space, but our scientists, mm. our pilots, our writers. Um, so that's something we're definitely looking at for now very actively. And we're looking for diversity, not only on screen, but also behind the screen. So we're looking for creators coming from Black or Asian minorities, uh, could be songwriters, video creators, designers. So that's something we are really looking for now. And what is your commissioning process? How do you go about submitting a, a program to you? Oh, is that, that's very simple. A lovely here. idea right now. Yeah, yeah it is. It's a very simple. Email us at content at hopster.tv. Uh, we're still quite a small team. We look at content uh, and we, we are very um, quick as well. So that's a good thing. So we are very easily can tell you if it will work, won't work. So it has to be about learning, diverse, inclusive, gender neutral, or even more important, there could be there can be no gender stereotypes. And it needs to be smart, but also really funny and sweet because we help kids learn the stories they love. They have to fall in love with the characters. Sure. I think you've answered this one already, but just to make sure, right. from Hop Skip Studio, is there any live action on Hop? So I'm guessing there would have to be. For what you've just um, said. So, so our uh, kids who, have, who saved the world was live action. So that was one of one mm -hmm. of the first ones where actually kids were talking about what they do for the environment. So um, we are experimenting with this. Animation tends to work better, but we are open mm -hmm. to ideas. A question from Carla: What is the business model behind Cadoodle and Hopster for production houses? Um, so well, hopster, uh, in terms of hopster, that yeah. depends because it depends if someone comes with a ready idea to us, then we share the underlying IP rights. Um, we uh, wanted to say thank you to Ardeman, who actually distributes our originals quite successfully uh, around the world. Um, so, uh, so we first window is, is normally on hopster. Second window will be uh, wherever um, um, Ardeman sells our content to. We are we are sharing the profits uh, as well with the creators, so that's our model. But normally we uh, fully finance the um, the commissions if they're really fitting into what we need. Uh, but also, a quick question from Chitra, who asks: Can, just, can uh, just writers you. directly send to you, um, as you just you gave your email address a moment ago, or should people go through a production house? Um, to be honest, we are, again, like sometimes some people come with ideas, like we work with um, music composers and producers and they bring a song and then we go and right. find an animation that we worked with before and create the content together. 
or people come with a production studio as well. But as I said, we are very, very flexible. The only thing I want to say is like, we are not looking for series of 52 episodes. We are not looking for episodes that are 10 minutes or 20 minutes. We're looking for a short form um, and we don't have budgets of 3 million per show. So just to make it clear. Yeah, anything else you can tell us about the commissioning process beyond, beyond the emailing um, and... Uh... <laughs> Well, the, normally it's always best to come with an idea, a treatment. If you have, mm -hmm. if you're coming with a production company, of course, a little bit of a style guide, guys, how the characters will look like. Um, and then if we like it, then we normally ask you to provide a script for a few episodes, just so we see how you're thinking about that. And of course, budget would be good as well. Unless you don't have a production studio, we can work on it together. But like have an idea and some visuals, normally like quite nice to start a discussion. Um, a very positive response from Martin Wright at Game Lab saying, can you remind us of the email address again? And I'll write it down as <laughs> yes. well. Very simple. Sorry. Content yep. at hopster.content, as in video content, music content, at hopster.tv. Hopster.tv. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's writing it down. Thank you <laughs> very, very much. Like, hit me on, hit me on, find, find me on Twitter. Um, I'll be... Yeah, happy to. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and, and uh, another question come in. Where is Hopster based? Where are you? Hopster is based in London. Currently, Hopster is based mm. in homes. So we have people who are working from US, uh, France, Spain, Scotland, and so various places. But that, that London, we are London based. Brilliant. Thank you very, very much. Um, if anyone has any more questions for you, Mickey, we'll we'll have them in back chat at the end. You are going to stick around, aren't you, for another yeah. half an hour after yeah. the session? Thank you very much, Mickey Wojnacka at Hopster. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's move on to Estelle Lloyd, who is co-founder and coo at Azumi. Hello, Estelle. How are you? Hello. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. Good to Would see you... everyone. Yeah. Thank Would you mind describing Thank... your role at Azumi? Of course, yes. I love the fact that you you call it coup. I I, I think I'm going to steal it and use that now. Um, it's a the, chief the... operating officer, is that right? <laughs> That's right. So I'm co-founder and chief operating officer of Azumi, and uh, since very recently, Da Vinci Media. Um, Azumi, we've been around since 2015. Uh, co-founded the company uh, back then. Um, and then in December of 2019, we acquired uh, da Vinci Media, uh, which is a business uh, media company that has been around for 15 years. Um, and we've now combined uh, the two teams. We are about uh, close to 100 people with offices in London, in Berlin, in Istanbul, and then uh, people in uh, the US. And I think that's it for now. Uh, we're growing uh, very, very rapidly. Um, so just to give a little bit of feedback about uh, Azumi, uh, Azumi is a fun learning um, platform, uh, media company. Um, uh, da Vinci Media is a, an educational media company, so much more focused on educational content. Um, we combined the, the businesses because we, at the core, have the same uh, ethos, which is to look for uh, you know, fantastic educational content for kids that is also fun um, by content i don't just mean video we also are very heavy on games we have produced a lot of games we own a, a portfolio of about 100 games and then we also license games um, i've got two showreels one for each brand so um, they are very quick but maybe we can uh, see them now just as a, as a little intro
And now the other. <laughs> then the next one. <laughs> Show me what you're cooking. Oh, let me see them moves. You got the whole world looking like they're seeing a kind of magic taking hold of you. Show me what you're cooking. Oh, let me see them moves. You got the whole world looking like they're seeing a kind of magic taking hold of you. So Azumi and Da Vinci, and one really concerned with learning and entertainment and the other ed more educational. Yeah. Um, have you been, yeah. I'm guessing you've been incredibly busy as well over the pandemic, Estelle? We, we, we have, we've been incredibly busy. Uh, the, the, the traffic on our combined products, and I'll explain what this is, has been about 40 times that 400%. So it's a lot, obviously it's a lot of, uh, of usage. Um, so just to, uh, um, so, so we have um, linear channels uh, with DaVinci, uh, we have uh, connected TV apps and we've got mobile apps. So we actually serve our content um, across uh, a, a quite a large portfolio of products which enables us to reach an audience of about 60 million kids and families at the moment. One thing that is very specific to Da Vinci, which I love, and which was the reason, one of the reasons why we were so interested in making this acquisition is that they localize the content in local languages, um, which is why they've managed to create a very well-known brand um, in parts of the world where really there isn't a huge amount available for kids, particularly in the educational space. Um, so it's it's fantastic that they, they, they do that. But as a result, we have a relationship with content partners, which goes really deep. The licenses tend to be for a longer period of time. We do either access the dubbings if they exist or we dub the content ourselves which uh, it requires a, a very big investment so we do make content decisions uh, very carefully we are not a product which has got twenty thousand episodes of some uh, uh, we we are a, a curated um, um you know offering um, which is focusing again on educational for kids uh, 12 and under. Okay, 12 and under. A question straight in from Jonathan at Renowned Films. He's saying, how is Azumi planning to differentiate itself and what original funded commission opportunities are there for producers? Hi, Jonathan. Great question. So we, um, we do already produce um, our own uh, originals. Um, we did that with Azumi, we're doing that also um, uh, with the Da Vinci brand. And uh, at the moment, it's been uh, all done in-house. So we haven't really done any co-productions. Um, but the result of the combination of Da Vinci and Azumi is that now we are a much bigger company and we can start um, looking into co-productions. And we're really actively looking for co-production opportunities at the moment. Um, it has to fit our ethos. It has to fit our curriculum. We have a curriculum for both brands and it has to be. Um, so the big areas, the big topics that we're looking that we're looking to address at the moment and offer to kids and families are around social emotional learning. So we're really, as uh, Mickey was saying, we're really struggling to find great programming with uh, with diversity in it. Um, and, and it's something that we're interested in exploring as a co-producer. Um, and so we are welcoming, um, you know, ideas. Um, we, we like to look at um, 
at a, an idea which at least has got maybe a pilot. Uh, we, we don't really want to look at things that are very, very, very early stage just because we don't really have the bandwidth. We don't really have the the capacity in health to really take it at the, the very very at, at the very infancy level so we try to we prefer to look at things that are a bit more uh advanced okay. uh, social emotional and how, learning. how would you go about getting that to you estelle how would people contact oh, um, you with that with, on our website just uh davinci or azumi websites the, you've got uh, contact forms there so you know that's the best way oh, i'm on linkedin i'm on twitter i'm everywhere you can contact me directly um through either of these channels as well um but uh, so going back to the topics that we are looking at and trying to acquire at the moment so social emotional learning most of it's scripted uh sometimes not but um so so that's that's a big area the second big area is factual we have a lot of factual content on the uh, on our channels and apps um factual content works really well for us um it's also tends to be easier to dub so it's 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 an investment that we are more readily prepared to make uh, than necessarily scripted animated content for example which is quite more which is a bit more difficult to dub and more expensive mm -hmm. as well so um uh, during the this uh, period of uh, kids being at home and families looking at um you know things for the kids to do we've we've seen a lot of interest and a lot of traffic on our content um, that's arts and crafts and makes and science experiments we have a lot of this type of content it seems to be valued enormously by parents at the moment kids love the wow factor of it so we check we tend to produce this really well uh, when we make them ourselves and we have a, a arts and crafts uh, a couple of arts and crafts series and we're in the process of making a lab stem science series as well and we tend to produce them so that they really give you that wow effect so that when you see them you really really want to make it and we can see it works we can see the kids are making them they're sending their makes on social media um, back to us it's really sweet to see that and to engage with uh, with families this way oh that's that's great two questions about your age demographics you you said earlier under 12s didn't you for, for both channels yeah. is that Okay. Azumi is, is there yeah. is five to eight so we don't we, yeah. we don't really do preschool and then um and then da vinci is more six to twelve okay okay so i hope that answers your questions nessa from little moon and philippa from bandit cornwall where is azumi and da vinci based i mean based everywhere so we we have an office so we've got a, an office in london we've got an office in berlin uh, we've got an office in Istanbul uh, covering the um, Asia um, Pacific region, and then we also have a small office in the US. Is there a mothership somewhere, or is is it equal for for every country? Oh no, no, it's not equal. So both the uh, the team um, in London is about thirty five, and then in Berlin we're about forty, and then the rest is um, the other locations that I, I just mentioned. I mean, in terms of content, particularly. Um, it's it's done equally in Berlin and in um, and in London. So we've got Luca, our head of content, based in uh, based in London, and then uh, Vanny Una, based in Berlin. Um, yeah, that's um, those are the two main, I suppose, offices. Yeah, Bella Tomlinson asks that with with their programming at Kino Bino. It could be Kino Bino. I'm guessing it's Kino Bino. She asks, we really want to get get the audience children involved with developing their shows and giving a voice to the audience is that something that you encourage i'm guessing it is from everything you've said absolutely really absolutely at the heart of the conception I, mean, I, I suppose the 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 the, the two keywords to remember about us is fun learning if it's fun and it's got a learning component we'll look at it no matter no matter the okay. format no matter the language we can look at uh, original pro productions in a completely different language and then dub them, which is something that we've done many times. Da Vinci has done that many times. Obviously, it's very, um, um, you know, very, I mean, excellent. The team is excellent at producing um, uh, dubs uh, for the various feeds that we have. So absolutely, uh, you know, if, if it's fun and it's and it's got a learning component in it, we'll look at it. And not just, uh, obviously, video content, but also games. 
Yeah. And are you looking, would you favour an idea that had a global appeal over one that's just British, say? Well, of course. I mean, um, yeah, absolutely. We, yeah. we, we try yeah. again. I mean, look, we, we, we do have a very large, you know, we, we, we run a very large content budget, but we, mm. we have to be smart about how we, you know, we spend it. So anything that has uh, got a global appeal uh, rather than a very regional one is going to always be more favorably um, yeah, regarded. Yeah. For sure. Is there any upcoming content that you'd like to reveal and announce today? Um, so we've got, uh, as I said, we've got uh, an original production coming up on science and, and tech experiments, which we're really excited about. Um, in terms of license, I mean, we, look, we license so much content that, um, yeah, we've got a new grid in, um, we've got a new grid in September with lots of new content. We've also added two new languages to our uh, current feed. So currently we're dubbing in six languages. We're adding another two. So we're going to be at eight. Um, um, yeah, so that's, uh, that, that's the upcoming content. Mm. A question from Danny Brogan, who says, has the pandemic impacted whether you would commission episodic shows? Um, yeah, I, as I, I said, that. as long yeah. as if it's, if, yeah. <laughs> if it's fun and learning, we'll consider uh, commissioning yeah. or co-producing. I should say that, and, I mean, and, we were, yeah. um, no, I was just going to say, following from what you've just said, there's a question just coming in saying, does the learning need to be curriculum related? But I'm guessing no, no, um, no, if no, it's no, global, it's, you, you take your own lead on that. So, so it's not our learning is not tied to the curriculum. It's um, it's learning that actually doesn't take place at school. Um, sure. So it's about it's about you know, uh, you know, what if I'm being bullied at school? Um, you know, having a new baby in the family. Um, you know, content that you know uh, really portrays the kid a kid's life in in real life um, and really tries to support um, uh, kids' experiences and also. Um, you know, inspire and, um, you know, get kids to think about, you know, try new things, thinking about new ways that, um, you know, experiences are happening everywhere else in the world. Estelle Lloyd, thank you so much for your time. Thank um, you. More questions if you have them. Thank you, Estelle, who is the co-founder and coo at Azumi. Because <laughs> it kind of rhymes, soft rhyme. But uh, it's not too late to ask a question because back chat later on that happens on this platform. So don't leave where you're watching this program right now because that's where you can ask a question. Let's welcome Chris Murphy, Director of Kids Content for UK and Republic of Ireland for Sky. Hello, Lucy. Hi, everybody. It's a shame not to be able to see your smiling, happy faces out there in front of us, but I'm imagining it. <laughs> what does your role at Sky involve, Lucy? Um, I'm the director of kids content, which means I look after all the um, content that we primarily that we acquire and commission as originals. Um, but obviously the heart of our kids service at Sky are our 11 live channels. So I also work with those um, channels um, to make sure that our, our service includes all of their priorities as well as our own. Um, and, you know, Sky has, um, as I said, 11 live channels. We've got 5,000 episodes available on demand. Um, and we cater for an audience of one to 12 year olds. And we make sure that we've got something for each end of that audience, which is obviously very diverse. Um, and we have a kids app as well, which includes over 90 mobile games, quizzes, interactive arts content, and as, as well as all of our video content that can either be streamed or um, downloaded to watch on the go. Well, let's take a From, look at uh, some. Should we have a look at your sizzle reel, Lucy? I don't have a sizzle reel. I've actually, what I've brought with me today, I decided as yeah. the um, conference was going to be very different this year, that we, I would yeah. do things differently as well. <laughs> um, what I thought I would show is a sort of sneak peek of some of our um, original productions. 
Um, in 2020, we will have launched 12 original productions and they range from smaller commissions such as animated shorts we made with um, Street Cat Bob. Um, we've made really big shows like the beautiful animated show Moomin Valley, um, as well as factual entertainment formats, which um, I've got a sneak peek of one of those um, called Bad Nature, as well as our weekly news show um, presented by kids. So I've got a, um, a little reel here, which just includes three clips from three of those shows, if you want to play that. Here's one of my favorite time-saving tricks. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Here's how it's done. Bad nature. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. It's ridiculous. Ha, ah. ah, see? Give me strength. It's revolting. <laughs> Uber cool, yeah? I think I just stood in something. Yeah, and it's oh. full of fantastic facts. This sand comes from out of my bottom. What? It's not just about police treatment, but how people are being treated all over the world. And what's going on right now, I think is awful because I know that I personally have experienced racism before on social media with people writing hateful comments about me just because of the color of my skin. And that really upset me, but I can't even imagine what it must be like for people who were experiencing racism in a much worse way than I did with people being arrested, beaten up and even killed. And actually, if you take a look at this photo, it was taken last Saturday at a march in London for Black Lives Matter. It really is powerful that this guy who was on a completely different side to the guy who was trying to disrupt it and who got hurt, uh, he still wanted to help him. And it just shows that we all have our differences and our different beliefs, but we all can come together and help each other. Yeah. Standing up for yourself and showing that you are proud to be who you are is so important. <laughs> Where, um, FYI a few times, it's brilliant, with First News, it's great. Um, what yes, content it's a, has worked something particularly... That, yeah, Sorry, yeah it's something change. that we're really proud of as a show. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we've been able to keep that weekly news show going um, all throughout the pandemic, which is um, credit to the teams involved. But it's also, um, funnily enough, it's had a side impact of actually increasing the number of kids that can contribute and comment and be involved in news and current affairs stories as they can um, video conference in. Mm -hmm. What else has worked particularly well for you over the pandemic, Lucy? Um, well, obviously, like everyone, our viewing's gone up, kids are watching a lot more yeah. and the need of um, families have changed um, so we introduced an educational section which is has done incredibly well and that is a real mixture of content from our partner channels shows that we've brought in um, and we've also been able to use the BBC bite size content for older kids which is amazing as well um, so that's done incredibly well um, but and I think you know what we try and do Everything we do at Sky Kids is done through the sort of dual um, lens of will it be loved by kids and will it be trusted by parents? And I think that's um, something that we apply to everything, whether it's an original commission or whether it's a um, acquired box set of a big brand show. Um, so we've we've launched lots of new shows over the last few months um, and next week we're launching a anime collection for the older end of our audience and that's going to include some really great anime titles from Pokemon and Bakugan and Beyblade and Sonic Boom so you know we, we're constantly refreshing what we're offering. Well unless you live in an embassy Lucy you're clearly at work um, looking I... very large there. <laughs> yes this the is not HQ my kitchen. Sky. <laughs> yes, clean. I am at work. But um, how has it been? How how has um, work gone over the last what, for you? How how's, how's it gone? Well, we've been really fortunate that um, COVID hasn't impacted too much on our slate. Um, we've invested a lot more in original content over the last couple of years, and that investment is going to continue. Um, of course, we've had a couple of things that have had to move out to 2021 because, you know, we need to keep production teams safe. Um, but we've also 
really worked hard and collaboratively with producers to deliver shows um, which can be produced safely and within COVID guidelines. Um, and we've actually even commissioned and greenlit new shows during the pandemic. So we're making some fantastic arts and crafts shows for the um, summer. Um, we've, we're making ultimate video skills with Zodiac so that older kids can also um, um, amuse themselves over the summer, making amazing uh, um, videos and learning new tricks and skills to show their friends and family. Um, and you know, we have kept that news show going. We've also made some documentaries with the support of the Young Audiences Content Fund around really big, important um, ideas that kids are interested in. So racism and knife crime and mental health. So are there any mixed. gaps in what you're offering at the moment? That you, any content that you're specifically looking for right now? Um, we 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 are looking for drama. That's always something that um, is you know something that we're really looking for. Um, the great thing about on demand is that you can put box sets up. You can have um, narrative arcs across series. You don't have to sort of go for episodic shows. So we are looking specifically for drama. We're looking for. Um, more of the sort of short form arts and craftsy type of content as well. Um, and mm -hmm. sort of like, you know, as always, we're constantly on the lookout for um, shows to acquire from those big brands. Um, I mean, we don't just buy big brands. We look for little gems as well. And I'm thinking of a show, for example, like Tiniest Man in the World, which we bought from um, France, which is um, much loved at Sky. <laughs> Um, a, a question in from Andy Mundy Castle at Doc Hearts. Hello, Andy. Um, you've answered his second question, but for a new indie that you're working with and, and may want to limit the risk and but build a relationship nevertheless, what is the desirable runs of show? I guess that's in terms of number of episodes and also duration. It can really be anything. And again, that's the flexibility of a an on-demand platform we're not limited by having to fit within the requirements of a linear schedule so um you know we do go from sort of fairly short runs of shorts right up to you know hundreds of episodes of a really big um show like pokemon where apparently 52 episodes is never enough <laughs> you you answered so, the question i think about the um ya cf you you are getting access to that uh, fund, aren't you? Question. Just we through. got access to that you, you through did our it. collaboration with Sky News um, and also First News. So the news program that we make, um, and we worked with the Young Audiences Fund to create some documentary material. Um, and the way that that works is it goes, um, the show goes out twice a week on Sky News. Um, it also sits on demand on Sky Kids. And then we also make the show available to schools throughout the UK um, to use as part of their curriculum. And that's through with the news. It has a very wide reach and that's something that we're really looking to expand. Brilliant. Oh, I think we're just losing your uh, line there a, li a little bit, uh, Lucy, but while we try and get that back, we, we've lost audio. Have we lost the pictures? No, we can still see you. But just to answer another question about uh, all these sessions, you're back, I can hear you. All sessions will be available okay. on the CMC website. A couple of questions about that. Um, what is the commissioning process for Sky Kids? A question from Aletta Pizzi at Fly High Stories. Um, the, if you can look on sky.com at our commissioning pages and you'll find the email addresses there for our commissioning editors. So I have a lovely team of people here um, with me. We would um, traditionally, you know, we would look at every show that comes in and try our hardest to respond in a timely manner, although we do get deluged. So it does sometimes take us longer than we would like. Right, right. Well, Ashling at Hop Skip Studio asks, are there any priorities you can share in terms of regional, being regional specific or anything? Um, no, I mean, obviously Sky goes across the country and we want, yeah. we look for shows that kids will really love. Um, so we don't have any kind of quotas or regional requirements. A lot of our, the shows that we get from our 
Um, partner channels are American, so we do try and balance that out a little bit with um, British. Um, and we, mm. you know, we'll often look for shows that have got that kind of very premium British original look. Um, and in fact, just to help again, because I'm shaking things up a bit, if you go to the slides that um, I have, um, you know, to really talk to the audience in terms of thinking about your ideas, um, it's always good to think about the home they're going to. <laughs> so yeah. this is just a quick snapshot of our um, kids' um, content area this week. Um, really think about, you know, what idea could you see working amongst these other shows so i think that's always helpful and then on the next slide um because we do look for a really wide range of content right from the kind of big flagship shows like moomin valley down to factual shows like bad nature which we just showed you a little bit of and what we're looking for is different in each of those um genres so you know for drama looking here at something like the athena which we made last year um, and H2O, which we bought as what we know to be an incredibly popular box set. We want them to be, you know, glossy and memorable and aspirational. Whereas for the um, big brand shows that we would look at, um, like Pip and Posey, which we're in the middle of producing, um, we want those to be exclusive, um, at a level of exclusivity valued by parents, um, and also really recognisable so that they stand out. Um, and a great example of that, actually, we can announce today, we've just um, greenlit a show based on the brilliant world of Tom Gates, which we're so excited about. Um, I've always loved Liz Pichon's books, and she's um, created a world full of memorable characters and silly jokes and arts and crafts and all that kids really love. And that's just gone into production with um, Black Camel and Wild Child up in Scotland. And we'll be launching that next year. A final quick question, if we may, from Nicola at the Media Colony. Do you prefer live or animation? Live action or animation? Absolutely no, um, you know, we, we don't go either way. We, we want a really broad selection of genres and formats and styles because kids viewing depends on the time of day it depends what they're watching on the platform they're on so we try and make sure that we've got something for every time and every moment in a child's life lucy murphy director of kids content for the uk and the republic of ireland at sky thank you very very much <laughs> and My thank you to our pleasure. other speakers brenda bisner who is a mum and chief content officer at Kadoodle, to Mickey Poynatska, chief content and creative officer at Hopster, and Estelle Loy, co-founder and coo at Azumi. We have some great videos in the research strand, which will offer more on the topic of the SVOD landscape. Ofcom have produced the rise of the vlogger next door and discovery research, and the BBC are presenting understanding kids' SVOD habits, all worth taking a look at. And to help your timetable, all the content from these webinars and the on-demand videos will be accessible here on the platform until the 30th of September for your exclusive use. Speed meetings associated with this session are on Zoom at 3.30 p.m. Please be prompt and remember you have to be pre-booked. Backchat is opening up now for 30 minutes, so please just stay here on vMix. If you're not aware of Backchat, it's a simple Zoom style message board where you can leave questions and comments. The chat will be enabled in a second. And Brenda, Estelle, Lucy and Mickey have all kindly agreed to stay and participate with that. Join us next for the keynote, the creative keynote at 4 p.m. You'll be hearing from Waterston's Children's Laureate and number one best-selling author illustrator, Cressida Cowell. And don't forget tonight's quiz. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to our speakers. Have a great evening. Bye. Bye-bye.